All right, so in this video, I'm gonna provide a sort of counterintuitive approach to understanding and mastering tonic herbs. Working at the level of adjusting our mindset, adjusting the way in which we are perceiving and looking at things. Because oftentimes this is causing people a lot of confusion, a lot of misunderstanding. So the first thing that we need to understand is uh, kind of where we're starting from a lot of the time. Because if you don't really know where you are now or where you were, then it's you're a little less informed and more importantly empowered to be able to make better decisions moving forward. So understanding our dominant pre-existing paradigm that we're generally brought up in in the modern world, which tends to view the body, tends to view symptom symptoms and health and disease in a very limited, very mechanical, very pathogenic uh, type of way, meaning meaning inherently based in pathology where where you I've even heard stories of people who where their doctor said you're not quite sick enough yet for me to treat you come back in a few months when you're sicker and then I can help you because basically Western medicine has a lot of great things it's brought a lot of benefit to the world obviously yet it has a lot of weaknesses and and drawbacks meaning if you have a lot of chronic things based in this type of uh, paradigm, then it becomes a bit difficult. But for the, the focus of this video, we wanna look at really this mechanical, over, overly simplistic way of looking at things where we have like a symptom and then mechanically, we're gonna treat it with this drug, this chemical. And if that doesn't work, which it often doesn't, we'll just keep throwing more chemicals more drugs, more treatments, more aggressiveness at this thing. It's kind of like the shotgun or bazooka approach. It's like, oh, here's, here's our disease. First, we'll start off with just you know a low caliber pistol. Pfft, pistol didn't get rid of it. So now we're gonna go up to the shotgun. So we're gonna just blast it with everything we can. That didn't work, well, we gotta go to the bazooka. That didn't work, well, we gotta drop the, eight, the atomic bomb on it. Where it's like this, symptom or this issue is seen as this evil, almost demonic force. Because if we really understand the underpinnings of this paradigm and how it relates to things like monotheistic Christianity and how these worldviews are very similar, uh, then it will become more clear, but that's a little bit outside of the scope of this video. The point I wanna make is we inherit this really mechanical, pretty disempowered, pretty just corrupt, and neglected and um, impoverished worldview. And then what happens is we hear about the alternative worldview, whether that's herbalism or Reiki or yoga or sh shamanic healing or whatever it is that people get into. Basically what tends to happen is they recycle this pre-existing paradigm and they tend to subsequently overemphasize. So example of that is People will uh, overemphasize their feelings and their emotions to the point that it makes them sicker and sicker and sicker and sicker pretty much forever because they inherited a pretty weak, impoverished paradigm and they just said, oh, well, now we're gonna do the alternative. But really, if we have a coin, right, then the other side of the coin is still the same coin. It's not necessarily different. It's just something that perhaps we adjusted to our inherent bias. And that's a, a pretty major error that I would say about 99.5%, if not higher, of people are operating in, meaning their pre-existing worldview, what they started with, and then just slightly rearranging it, which is, is, again, just helpful to understand the world in which we live. And this tends to be a bit contrasted, let's say, with the philosophy and the ideas underpinning traditional Chinese medicine. And I don't necessarily mean TCM in modern America because they have been kowtowing to this paradigm for a very long time. People don't even really understand what she is, what it means. They don't really even understand the deeper context. And what they'll do is either make it very scientific and mechanical and purely material basis or somewhat magical and superstitious and spiritual and 
try to fill in the gap with all this other stuff, but both examples are demonstrating a lack of understanding, a lack of true clarity. Because inherently what makes Chinese medicine so good is the fact that it's weak, the fact that it's not very strong as compared to modern medicine, which is very strong, very potent because you have this symptom and what everyone wants to do is I'm going to throw this at it. Okay. We'll take an alternative thing. Okay. I'm going to do therapy. Then I'm going to do shamanic energy clearing. Then I'm going to do quantum Reiki. Then I'm going to do herbs. Then I'm going to do massage. Then I'm going to go to float tanks. Then I'm going to do ayahuasca. Then I'm going to do yoga. Then I'm going to do Qigong. Then I'm going to do Tai Chi. Then I'm going to uh, do past life regression, then I'm going to do tarot cards, then I'm going to do crystal bowls, then I'm going to do this, then I'm going to do this, then I'm going to do this, and just basically pummel, pummel that thing until it eventually gives way, which is again, just this paradigm. But instead of using these pharmaceuticals or whatever treatments, they're just using whatever else they can find. And the problem is that it's still the same mindset. It's still the same approach. And by those mechanics, it will likely never actually heal. It may heal in a short term sense where it's like, oh, my, my hip was injured and it hurt, but now it doesn't hurt anymore. But now my femur is misaligned and my hip is limited in mobility, but it doesn't hurt anymore. So I must have been healed and this, this all must have worked. But then now my shoulder hurts. Okay. Sort that out. Oh wait, but now my neck hurts. Wait, but now my other hip hurts, but wait, but now my knee hurts, but now my foot hurts, but now my head hurts. And this thing just keeps moving around and shape shifting. And we just keep chasing it endlessly rather than identifying what it actually is, addressing it in a clear and direct way, and then moving on to something else, a different level of functioning. But, uh, it's not really possible within these pre-existing paradigms. So how this relates to tonic herbs is pretty important because people will operate from this thing and they'll want to throw tonic herbs in the mix, which is great. It's a good thing. Herbs are, can be very helpful. They've really helped my life and thousands of my clients. It's helped them as well. I've got tons of testimonials and emails and all types of things, of course. And sometimes that's really all that's required. Sometimes it's really just that simple. Sometimes someone has a significant dopamine deficiency. They take something like Makuna has a lot of L-dopa and then they feel a lot better. That's a, that's a specific case. Sometimes that is not the case. Sometimes that is not helpful. And that's kind of what I'm talking about here is this sort of broad overview, but also understanding that situations can be specific situations can be different. And really the point that I'm trying to get at, is correcting and shifting a different mindset to a much broader perspective. Because if our medicine is inherently weak, okay, we understand that in terms of modern medicine, but also what else do we mean? Well, compared to our lifestyle, meaning how we sleep or we don't, the food we eat or we don't, and how we exercise or don't, an herb or a treatment or a modality or whatever else we're doing is going to be somewhat hindered in its efficacy. Uh, like you could take all the tonic herbs you want in the world, but if you go to bed at 3 a.m. every day and wake up at 11 a.m., that's really not, it might help, of course, but the results might be a bit minimized. Same thing with food. If we're, take, if we're taking in food that's allergenic and inflammatory, or we're eating the best food, but our mindset is incorrect. We're really OCD and uptight about being healthy and being pure and kind of orthorexic, then that's going to negate the nutrition of the food because our body's not going to absorb because our mindset is so whack. Same thing with exercise. If we never exercise, we're huge couch potatoes. We never move our bodies in whatever way is appropriate and relevant to our situation. Then whatever else is happening over here, minimally effective. Same thing if our relationships, if our relationships are complete, completely uh, causing us a lot of stress, we have a lot of frustration, lack of fulfillment, a lot of uh, just negative emotions around these things. Then again, what are we treating and why? 
Because oftentimes if we can sort these things out, then a lot of this other stuff becomes less important and actually more effective because we're not working against our body. We're not working against our natural functioning and we're not necessarily operating from a, such a limited perspective. What I mean is if we're operating from this paradigm, we're generally not going to seek connections over here. Like for example, when I was, when I was in maybe like seventh grade or something, I had migraines like every day, all the time. And it really sucked and it didn't feel very good. So what happened? Went to the doctor, he talked to me for maybe five minutes, wrote me a prescription, come back in two weeks, see what happens. I think I took those pills once or twice and was just like, this is stupid. And then just never got into it. Now looking back, it's like, well, I got up every day at like 6 a.m. to go do something that I hated and that I didn't want to do, surrounded by people that I didn't really like, learning material that I had no interest in. And then there's that, okay? And then the night before, I'm staying up super late because I was on the computer, or I was doing whatever else, okay? For breakfast, I would eat Gatorade and Pop-Tarts. Hmm, you can already start to see, okay, really throwing a, a pill at that whole, this whole continuum, this whole thing, <laughs> this whole function, really not gonna do a lot. Minimal efficacy and kind of a waste of time in a lot of ways and can actually do more harm. For example, I have all this thing going on. So clearly my gallbladder, my liver are already stressed based on diet, lifestyle, emotional thing. Mm -hmm. So we're going to throw a pharmaceutical in there, which is probably likely going to further compromise my liver function based on the fact of what it is and how it does and how it affects the body. So that's just going to take me into worse health, but it's going to cover up the symptoms so I'll think I'm getting better, which is really what a lot of people do, even if it's natural and alternative or healthy. Uh, it's just, again, functioning from a very limited paradigm, a very limited set of criteria. And the same thing is true with our work and also our overall mindset to how we're doing things. And the key thing is that I'm not talking about this overemphasis because basically people really miss the point on a lot of this stuff when they overemphasize it in a really overtly new agey way. Like, oh, you just got to love everything. You just got to open your heart. You got to be grateful for everything. <sighs> to illustrate that, I have, let's say I have two, two friends that are entrepreneurs. One friend is really into goal setting and being grateful and uh, attending masterminds and having mentors and doing all the self-help type of thing. But in the last eight years, this person has not had a successful business, has not really been financially free, is generally not happy, but just keeps medicating themselves with more and more and more and more nonsense. But I have another friend, never done any self-help, never practiced this gratitude, never did any vision board or goal setting or law of attraction. Multi, multi-millionaire has had multiple very successful businesses at a very young age, but never did any of this stuff because he was too busy actually doing the thing that produced the result. Point of that being, it's not about all these other kind of nonsensical ideas, which of course are kind of important, but they're not the, the actual mechanic that works. A more functional thing is, is, well, are your relationships functional or dysfunctional? Are they fulfilling? Okay, if not, then maybe something needs to adjust. Perhaps how you're showing up, how you're approaching them, what you're communicating versus what you're not, or some very clear, specific, direct mechanism that you can identify and then do, and then that will create movement in that thing. Same thing with your work, uh, various aspects of your mindset, your lifestyle. And again, I could go into each of these in extreme detail, but it's not really the scope of the video. Another thing that I'll do to illustrate this type of point in this mindset, people talk about something like feng shui. For, uh, it's like a, like kind of a new agey alternative thing. So people think, and they throw all this nonsense and complexity like, oh, you want to be happier or you want to clear negative energy. So put this purple cloud painting in the left northwest corner 
of this blah 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 and then put the red triangle here and hang the bamboo flute here and then that will somehow help you I don't know be happier or get more money that's a lot of complexity and that's probably not going to lead necessarily to the result because it's not really based on understanding or clarity what is a different way of looking at it is just saying do you have rapport with your environment? Do you feel good in that space? The objects that you surround yourself with, do you have rapport with them? Do you have positive associations and memories? Or do they make you feel stressed or anxious or uncomfortable? That's a lot more straightforward and direct and actionable. Because you can say, actually, yes, these three things, really a lot of rapport, these three things, really just, I don't need anymore, I don't want anymore, it's a lot of negativity or baggage or whatever, so these are gone, these are staying, wow. That was a lot more simple, that was a lot more direct, that was a lot easier, you didn't even have to go and do and think about very much, it's very clear and direct. That's a similar mindset to what I'm trying to point out here and also for understanding tonic herbs. Because if we have more of that clarity of mindset and simplicity, and things generally work better, and we're not necessarily gonna waste so much time and energy in just nonsense that really isn't relevant to us. So the key term, at least relating to tonic herbs, is basically supporting the body. So like going to bed and sleeping better, that's supporting the body. Eating food that we enjoy, even if it's not the most healthy, kind of doesn't really matter if we actually enjoy it and have a good mindset about it. And then actually exercising and moving our body Again, supporting our supporting this thing we're trying to have, which is a good lifestyle and a high level of enjoying our life. And then basically prevention, balance, and strengthening. These are a different way of functioning, a different way of looking at it, which sounds simple and unfortunately get lumped into a lot of kind of new agey vagueness, but we mean something very specific as it relates to very tangible and actionable things that we can do. So tonic herbs, let's say, can help us sometimes get to the place of this. So for example, for me, reishi helped me sometimes grow a lot with my mindset, meaning I would internally start to feel more comfortable and relaxed and then be like, you know what? This thing is not really working anymore. I'm done. I'm walking away and I'm gonna do something else or I'm gonna replace it with something more harmonious or whatever. And the last thing is to really understand regardless of whatever we're doing, it's a process that we're gonna move through. And we can really shoot ourselves in the foot, so to speak, if our mindset immediately jumps from here to here. Like, oh, well, so for work, that's a good example. For me, it was a series of progression of I hate this job, I like this job a little bit better, I like this job better, I like this job better, I like this job better, my mindset's better, my skills are better, and then I went off and just started doing entrepreneurial stuff, and that's a systematic thing. Rather than saying, I hate this job, but I can't have my dream job tomorrow, so I'm just not gonna do anything. That's not really not a healthy mindset. That's a mindset which, which this paradigm preys upon because we want instantaneous results, we want quick, easy, you know, f magic bullets, whatever. Or we want to believe in someone, we want to give all our power and authority away to some person that has a degree or number or letters after their name and let them do whatever they want to us. And when I say whatever they want, I mean whatever they want, which is what people do. They just show up and surrender all of their common sense, all of their autonomy, all of their sense of empowerment and authority to someone else, generally a complete stranger in a strange building, and then these people do whatever they want. <laughs> and then we don't necessarily ask, is it that effective? So the last thing I'll say is sometimes, like I've talked to people, and they're like, oh, I had all these immune challenges for so many years, but then I, uh, I did this round of treatment with my doctor, all these shots and vaccines and immunizations, and I don't really get sick anymore as much. But then I'm feeling them, they're ice cold all over, they're completely inflamed, they're bloated and puffed out beyond belief, their tissue is all firm and kind of dehydrated and bound up. And I'm like, well, yeah, I think probably because your health is worse. <laughs> your immune functioning just went down. So 
in the short term you kind of think you feel better but it's actually because you feel weaker and you feel worse so you forgot what you used to feel like and it's a very kind of slippery slope and it's like this board is a disaster <laughs> it's like our function can keep going down and we can think the weakness and the in the disease that we're strengthening is actually a good thing or actually we feel better but kind of don't which is in some ways part of the beauty at least in my opinion of chinese medicine because we can look at the pulse and see actually what's happening in the body not what we think not what someone tells us but literally what is happening